Week 10 pick em. So, bum, 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 bum. YouTube Oz it going the Goat House is back. We're back with Week 10 pick em's picking every single game every Tuesday night. Below us is the leaderboards, Subs League leaderboard. Pete's been a tight. Tight- creeping. He's been a, he, Pete's creeping. Oh, I bet, yeah, I've been a Titans fan my whole life. He's back on the yeah. Titans instead of the Vols because they won last yeah. week. We'll see Ugh. after they get shellacked by the Chargers this week how he's feeling. We'll we'll, we'll check in with him. Mm-hmm. The Week Nine winner in the Slubs the Slubs the Subs League Ooh. was Christopher Miller. I could not get in contact with Christopher Miller. That's why I say make your Twitter slash X handle your entry name. So if you can contact me somehow and prove that you are you, I'll put you in next week. So we had big ounce, long time. How, how do they prove it? Oh, they could prove it. Screenshot, like, like highlights that you're the picker. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it okay. out. But we have someone taking his place. Um, yeah. Are we ready to get in those picks? Let's, Let's get, get in, in those picks. picks. We're getting in those. Oh, the Ravens wearing the new alternates. They got the new alternate logo up there. Let me, guys, let me tell you something. The the primetime games this week are some heaters. They're absolute heaters. heaters. Nice. Starting with this division rival game, Bengals, Ravens. It was a battle last time they played. A lot of offense. The Bengals had it. And then they lost it in overtime. Could they see? They seem to be all about their business. Let me tell you. After that last game, Joe Burrow wasn't satisfied. He was locked in. He's telling the team, "Let's get ready. We got a big one on Thursday." If you know, they they feel like they're getting serious right now, and this is about that time where the Bengals click in. But the Baltimore Ravens are hot. I mean, they did lose to the Browns a week ago, but they're pretty hot. If you look at the last several weeks, they're home in prime time, wearing those new alternates. Oh, this is good. This is good. I can see this going. The Bengals battle again. See a high scoring. The battle, Bengals should have won last time. Uh, they yeah. they should have won. And that, you know what? We usually say they split, but since they should have won, yeah, I'm go with the Ravens at home. If it was in Cincinnati on a Thursday night, I'd definitely go with Cincy. But yeah, I'm going with, yeah. going with Baltimore. And I was going to add to your thing. You said they're getting serious. No, it's not serious though. Jermaine Burton. Not very, He's not, not serious. Not very serious. The Bengals, it sounded like the, for the first time ever, they were going to get serious at the trade deadline, mainly pursuing defense. They did not do that, but they did add a running back mm. in Khalil Herbert. That could be a sneaky addition. Pair him with Chase Brown as Zach Moss is injured. Think, Junior? It's a great, great addition. What is Dan? What is Dan? What, is his, what are his thoughts? I mean, I, I think he. Oh, never mind. I was going to say something stupid. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, moving on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Prime time in Baltimore. Bengals can't stop the run. Derrick Henry's the best in football, running the football the right now. I have to go with the Ravens. This, if this was in Cincy prime time, I would take them. I definitely could see them winning still. Trey Hendrickson's really heating up, but he's got to carry that defense. That's kind of an issue right there. Offense can light it up against this Bengals defense that is – excuse Ravens me, the Ravens defense that is str- – what's that? They trade for somebody? Ravens. Deontay Johnson the other day yeah. and Tradavius right, White. Tredavious White, White yeah. they don't really plan on starting, I don't think. Yeah. They got him for Deontay like a bag Johnson of chips. Deontay Johnson will be interesting to see, see him get more snaps. Yeah, they got a game plan for that, too. It's yeah. tough. Zay Flowers Just getting going. Off. Yeah. Um, I can see the Bengals winning for sure. I'm a, Both defenses are sus, borderline sus. No, they are sus. It's just the, the running game, one. Deontay Johnson might be a tough game plan because you don't know what the, what the, how, how to figure that, that two? out. That's two. That's a small one, though. It's a small one. Three, prime time in Baltimore. Four, alternate uniforms. Ravens. Give me the Bengals. Oh, oh give shit. Give me the Bengals. <laughs> what I said. Yeller's got the Ravens. Big Ounce has got the Bengals. With Ooh. The, uh, yeah, he's a Bengals fan. Big Ounce. Big Ounce has got uh, – oh, Never mind. Never mind. Who is the uh, – we have a Bengals fan that's always in here with us. So, usually the winner of the week gets to be in the picks, but Big Ounce is in that subs picks league. He said – yeah, I mean, he's been a long-time supporter. He's he's borderline Hall of Famer. Let's get him in here, right? I mean, if the guy would have answered, I, I, I couldn't get a hold – if I could have got a hold of him, he would be in here. If he gets a hold of me or if I get a hold of him for next week, well, then we'll have two guest pickers. But there you have it. Good old-fashioned split on Thursday Night Football – I, I'm wondering, I don't know for sure, if we have a lot of the same picks for some of these games coming up, but the primetime games are good. Oh. Germany is getting a treat, ladies and Germany. gentlemen. Giants and Panthers 
I mean, the Panthers are coming off win here, folks. They they beat the Saints after they got shellacked to them week one. And they got a fourth rounder for Mingo. Yeah, fourth rounder for Mingo's huge. Pete, in the words of Pete, that was the worst trade I've ever seen. <laughs> for who? The Cowboys, the worst trade. No, the worst. No, I'll take that back. The worst trade I've ever seen was A.J. Brown. The worst trade of the deadline. Yeah, at the deadline though. That's that's all right. That's so for sure. you, there you go. You could pr- you could take for the sure. bias out of it because the worst trade of all time is from a Titans fan is the Titans trading AJ Brown. Number two is the Cowboys trading a fourth round pick for Jonathan Mingo. I mean, Mingo looked pretty solid at Ole Miss, but he was a unique type of player. But I haven't seen the best of things from him. Dropping the ball, running on the sideline, trying to catch the ball. That's the that's the number one thing I saw. You know, I not, was at that game. I was at that yeah. game where he did that. I was like. I couldn't believe what I saw. I was like, I thought when I, when I saw it live, I thought he caught it in bounce, and I saw the replay. I was like, what the heck was this guy? He doesn't know where he's at on the field. I've never seen a receiver do that. That's, he's not a boundary guy, okay? He's like a, the ball was in bounce, and he jumped. He didn't have to jump for it. He jumped with his feet landing out of bounce and catching the ball in bounce. It was I the mean, strangest the, thing I've ever seen. This the, chair keeps falling on me, too. So you're the one who broke it, you fatty. Uh Cowboys maybe could revive him, get him going, you know, with Dak there when he's maybe, healthy. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't have him for uh, – But CeeDee Lamb there, I mean, good spot for him. But, yeah, he was kind of appealing at uh, Ole Miss just because they use him in so many different ways. But usually those guys, I guess, don't really work out in the NFL level we're learning. But, all right, Germany getting a treat. Giants, Panthers, do the Panthers keep rolling? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. I don't trust – I don't trust their defense, number one. Daniel Jones actually picked it up a little bit last week, I'd say. The Giants running back duo is legit, led by now the rookie running back, Tyrone Tracy, who was my number six running back in the draft. I had him ahead of Blake Corum. I'm going to pat myself on the back for a little bit for that one. But um, big thing here, though, Giants, I say it every week, I do love their defensive line, led by Dexter Lawrence, and that will be a problem for the Panthers' offense, I think. So I'll take the Giants in Germany. I'm guessing anything can happen in Germany, though. We'll see. Yeah, I think the uh, Giants' pass rush is too much. Uh, Bryce Young is going to be in trouble here. Did play a good game, but I could see him struggling in this one a little bit. I wonder if Thielen makes the trip to Germany. He didn't get traded. Was this a morning one, too? Yeah. Nice. All right, give me the Giants. Yeah, you can't wait to wake up and watch this one. I'm not going to wake up and watch this one. I'm going to wake up and play football. That's right. We play football. We're not uh, watching this one. We're playing. Yellers got the Giants. Big ounce. This guy's this guy's going to be nuts in this video. Carolina? He's taking Carolina, yeah. This boy is See, I, I wrote his picks down. I don't remember him saying Carolina. Hopefully I didn't botch that. But uh, All right, we'll put him over there. <laughs> I, it's right. I mean, if I wrote it, it's right. Uh, all didn't right. Write it. The graphics guy wrote it. Right, graphics, right, right, right. All right, so – Hey, at least we got one over there for the Panthers. I mean, anything that's that's a decent I mean, upset I mean, pick. It's, it's what are, what are the Giants three and are they three two and six two two and they're on a four game losing seven, streak. Peter. Oh, and the and the and the Panthers are two and seven. Yeah, right? they're Battle. also two and seven. This is equivalent to the Patriots Titans win, from last week. Two win teams there are in the league. The Titans went from wait, who's the, the scariest two win team? Titans. The, no, the Titans went from. It's the Dolphins for yeah. sure. <laughs> the Titans went from the second pick to the ninth pick after. Last week. Like, how does that happen? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just That's too many, bad. Too many, too many, well, There's only like two good quarterbacks already, in the draft. They already had their bye week, so all these other teams didn't have their bye week. Okay. That's all right. do it if it's all tied up for the picks. Strength of schedule. Okay. Strength of schedule. Uh, what if that's also tied? Coin flip. Coin flip. Okay. Here we go. Flip Next the game. Coin. Oh, the Patriots and the Bears. Oh. The Bears get to go back home after struggling on the road, and the Patriots just lost to the Titans. Junior, you're the Bears guy. You start us off, even though I know where you're going with this. You're going with the Bears. Me and Dan are taking the Bears. Oh, you talked to Dan. They're undefeated at home this yeah. year and in home games, so the London game as well. What did I send? What did I send to the group again? I forgot what it was. Did I send that or did I forget to send it? I think you're full of shit. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, sorry, guys. About the Bears, Bears are a different team at home, and the yeah. Patriots are one of the worst in football. Give me the Bears. But, I, you know, something you do have to monitor is the sweat, brisker injuries here. But and Gordon. Do they, and Gordon, and do you put Stevenson back in? You pretty much have to now. Uh, but I want to know what Yeller's doing. Yeller is, I remember what I wrote down, he is taking the Patriots. This is incredible. But this is incredible. but if Sweat and Brisker play, he might switch. He might switch. Oh, I did send That's a no. I sent it to our I sent it to the Beef Shack here. I sent it to the Beef Shack. Beef Shack group, okay. Yeah. Uh the Bears 
are 0 and 18 on the road with Matt Eberflus yep. in, in Sunday games. Yep. So mm-hmm. 0 and 18 on the road in Sunday games. That's right. That's incredible. Sloppy Soldier advantage. Give me the Bears. That field is an advantage. It is an tell advantage. You. Let me tell you. <laughs> Um, we'll get the solid report from Dan. We were talking about that's his job here at the Goat House Jeffrey, these days. Just Jeffrey Simmons went up to Drake May after and told him like, like you're gonna be a dog. He's like he's telling Drake May he's gonna be a dog. Like I, I came away watching. That. I was like Drake May. Like I don't know. He kind of struggled. Like he used his legs, which was something you didn't really see a lot of. Uh, you know, in college he used it at times, but he was using his legs a lot. But throwing the ball looked a little looked like a struggle. I mean, on, he's uh, yeah, he's still got. On Sunday. Bit to go. That's what we expected, though. But it's he's going to have a great play and he's going to have a bad play. I think That's what be he okay, is. But was not impressed by his game at all. Okay. Uh, we all got right. everyone here. Or no, we're missing outs. Big yeah. outs. Big outs. Come on. He's got the Bears. He's got the Bears. Lone dog, yeller, but he could switch. He's not switching. All right, if both those guys play, those are like star defenders for I the Bears. Switched, I switched to the Cardinals. Thank God, because. Uh, I saw Sweat was out, and Brisker was out, and Kyler Gordon was out. I you switched to the Patriots as well. So I did. That, was that did not mistake. count as a lone wolf for me. That did not count as a lone wolf. That doesn't count, yeah. Patriots. a lone wolf for me. Somebody had to be. No, Yeller was on the Titans. Yeller, Titan. Yeller had a good week yeah. last week. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, all right, all right, Whoa, okay. Oh. Bills, Colts, maybe Joe Flacco gets back on track here. He's played well this year up until you know before last week. Uh, yeah, I was surprised with the lack of offense in that do think, one. Do you think he bleeds blue? Definitely. I think he bleeds blue. But the Vikings do stop the run pretty well, so Jonathan Taylor wasn't a big factor. The Bills, again, the one thing they really don't do well is stop the run, even though they did it against Seattle. So Taylor can get going. It can open up things for Flacco. But I think the Bills are just too powerful. Uh, they'll have a day against that Colts defense. Give me Buffalo. Snot pounding of the week. Oh, snot pounding. Give me the Bills. Well, and Ryan Kelly now injured, going to be out for a bit. Their star center, maybe not a star anymore. Yeah, that's but no good. That's no good, though, folks. Uh, but they, they do have Bordellini. I think they'll be all right. Everyone's going with the Bills. Bordellini. Uh, Bordellini. 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 Tanner Bordellini. Is Tanner really a... I don't know about that. It's got to be. I think so. You don't have a last name like Borlini. You're not a no, we, no, you know, we know he's Italian, but if I, Colts is Tanner lose, really if a... If Colts lose, do they go back to... Big Allen's got the bills. Anthony Richardson. Uh, I mean, what was their plan? Like, did they... I mean, they. I guess they really thought they were going to win against the Vikings with Joe Flacco. That didn't happen. I didn't know. Now they got the bills. That's That's, you know, that's not looking very good. I think Richardson would have thrown. I mean, would have gave him a little bit more of a spark, but I think he would have thrown like three interceptions. I'm not saying against. like. So they were well, a little the, worried the about them they went with hurting Flack, himself. I guess the reason they went with Flacco is to give them chance, give them a better chance to win and make win the, the Super Bowl, make the playoffs. Yeah, make the playoffs. But there is a such thing, and it's a big problem in the NFL around the league with staffers. Too much confidence is a bad thing. Like thinking we can win something, we can win the Super Bowl if we play Flacco. It's a problem. It's a problem, folks. Everybody for the Bills. Junior locked it in as a snot pounding of the week. Ooh. Right. What do we got next? Oh, we got the Broncos and the Chiefs. The Chiefs still undefeated. A lot of these games seem to be close. The Broncos laid a stinker. They had a meatball day last week. Uh, maybe they get Girl back. On meatball it's day. a division game. Broncos could be sneaky against the Chiefs. I totally could see the Broncos winning this. I totally could see it. The Chiefs. So funny. The Chiefs are due. The Broncos are going to play them close, I think. They didn't play the Ravens close, and then they'll play them close. I can totally see it, but I'm not going to – I can't sit here and pick it because the Broncos have not proven to me that they can beat good teams yet, and they got to go to Kansas City. The Chiefs got a good defense. Can Bo Nix and company with the lack of receivers do enough? I don't think so. They don't have the altitude as a factor here. Uh, That's a good point. The Chiefs are just rolling. Again, I said this a couple weeks ago, I don't think they're ever going to lose another football game in the I'm history of the NFL. pretty sure they're going to lose at some point. There's no shot. I won uh, two of my leagues last night thanks to Travis Kelsey catching 14 balls. Was, I won two of my leagues nice. last night thanks to Kate Otten. Kate Otten. That guy is nuts right now. Uh, did you see D-Hop doing the Remember the Titans celebration? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, D-Hop's just going to keep, 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 keep getting better and better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Spit it out. So I started suddenly. I started suddenly, and I just kept going with it. You know, because I've been uh, a Titans guy my whole life, hopefully the Chiefs go to the Super Bowl so we get that fourth rounder for oh, D-Hop. Oh, so you're going Chiefs? I'm going with Chiefs. 
Uh, Remember the Titans? Yeller's got the Chiefs. In big ounce, it's got Broncos. the Broncos. Yeah, of course he does. <laughs> it's, hey, it's not a terrible pick. I could totally see it. Is it is a pretty terrible pick. Yeah, I mean, it is the Broncos. They haven't <laughs> beat a good team. I guess they beat the Bucks. Are we considering the Bucks a good team? Um, yeah. They're just banged up, but yeah. Banged up Bucks. Banged up Bucks. All right, there you go for, for um, that matchup. What was, what was Mostert? What did you say? Banging it up. Was that last year? Yeah, banging it up. Most starts banging it up. <laughs> Forgot about that. Ooh, Falcons and Saints. The Saints have fired Dennis Allen Ooh. and good old Uncle Darren Rizzi Uncle Darren. is the interim head coach. Uncle going to get the job done against the rival Falcons. Get, no, I'm not going to hey, do it. Give me well, that. Well, hey, you know what? There's always some good things happening when teams fire their coach. Yeah. In your home that, division that, rival game? Lights that fire in that gut, you know, and gets them going. Uh, but I'm going with the Falcons here. <laughs> I, I, you know. Traded Marshawn Lattimore over there. That's yeah, not looking good. The defense isn't looking as good as it once was. Dennis Allen's gone, even though he sucks as a head coach. He's a defensive guy. I don't guy. know how he got another head coaching job. I don't know how he kept his head coaching job. They going went seven into in a row. Saints fans, I tried to warn you at the beginning of the season, and then I took it back too early. I don't know what I was doing, but. I knew it all. I, I told knew you, it. You were I knew it all along. The Saints were going to be bad this Are year. Are you back in on the Falcons? Oh yeah, I'm. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> he's in there. He's, I'm he's deep. I'm he's deep, deep in, in those there. cheeks. All right, give me the Falcons. <laughs> Saints suck. Everyone's got the Falcons. Who's picking the Saints? Come Big on. ounce. Big ounce. Got no, pick the Saints. He's not. No, not, he's not doing this one. He's a wild boy. He is wild. Yeah. It's our guy. There he goes. Big ounce on the Falcons. All right. Darren Rizzi rooting for him. We'll see what he can do. What see Michael Thomas Riz ramming, could do. Ramming, yeah, uh, he's on fire. Uh, okay. Niners. Ooh. Bucks. The Bucks played pretty well against the Chiefs, especially given their top three receivers were out. They started to get a pass rush. Niners. Possibly getting, but it sounds like they're going to get McCaffrey back, guys. It sounds like it's a possibility here. It's going to get rolling right here. Coming off the bye week, guys are getting healthy. They always start. We, we talked about two weeks ago when they were uh, so got the when they were playing. We talked about how they always start off slow, or I was talking about they always start off slow. They always start off like three and four, four and four, and then they get going. Give me the Niners. Bucks defense is still sus. Give me the Niners. Everyone's got the Niners. These are we are just flying through this picks video the, right now. The Bucks are just. Why just, didn't they go for two? I don't understand how you do not go for two there. I was saying it at the time. They're a good team. They're they're so like even solid with team, injuries. Yeah. yeah, they just play so solid. I mean, they're keeping the band together. It's like the same. It's like the same team they've had for a couple of years. They're just drafting guys and adding guys through the draft. It's yeah. Building that continuity, you know. Mm, good, good work. They're a good team. Good word. We the didn't touch on. I like. I, I, res, I res, forgot to touch on Eberflus when we're on the Bears. His halftime speech or his not speech. He uh, told him what the score was. Yeah, I told him what the score I was. And, I didn't see this. I didn't uh, see it. That's what it. I forgot. He said something else. What did he say? Funny. Like, he's, he's, it was. It was along the lines of we got some guys. They got some that's guys. Good, yeah. That's good. That's what it reminded you need me one of. Those. You need one of those. He was like, I told him what the score was. Uh, this is the score, and that's uh, what we're gonna do. We're gonna play for each other. And then that's what we're gonna do. We're here. Yeah. Some. He was like. I was like. What? Okay. It reminded right. me of your ex-coach. Something he would have said. I think said. he's losing. You think he's losing them? I've been sounding the alarm to get rid of him since last year. Yeah. Could have had Ben Johnson last year. I don't think he wanted to. Lose. I mean, here's the thing with that though. Like, yeah, he's not a head. He's not head coach material. He needs to be gone. The whole Bears the fan defense, base is though. screaming it every week for a long time. But let's be honest. They could have Bill Prime Bill Belichick in there right now, and somehow, some way, that fan base will be blaming him. Everybody but the quarterback. So, you know, he does need to go. But what about uh, it? Doesn't really mean much when the entire fan that that entire fan base. But just is, forget about forget about like his lack, like his just lack of coaching. Just go off the eyeball test and just listening to the guy talk. Oh yeah, he's not. A, he's not a. Lead. He's a good defensive coach, he, but he's just. He doesn't seem genuine when he's talking. Yeah, he's very corny, and I don't like that. Like, what about uh, I don't know. What about DJ Moore? What are your thoughts on DJ Moore? He seems checked out at times. Yeah, he is clearly upset that he, he doesn't like get Caleb. A good throw. It's not good. Yeah, not good. They trade him this off season. No. Okay. No. Oh, this is a good one, folks. Steelers off the bye. Commanders just traded for Marshawn Latimer. 
and now uh, and they've been they've been hot this year. They've been hot. This is a good game right here. This is Russ, a good one. Russ was working over the bye week. See, I mean, was he was so working. He's been playing well for the Steelers. The offense is revamped, ready to roll. Great defense. They had Preston Smith could be a plug-and-play guy. You know, they don't need him to start. They had Mike Williams as well. These two teams are all in. They're all in, folks, and they're playing good football this year. What do we got? This I is a tough one. I don't think either team is – like you were talking about before, I don't want to shoot these the, the fans' hopes down, but – I don't think either of these teams are Super Bowl. Well, they're not going to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, contenders. Like, even making the Super Bowl. But they're all in. The coaches think they are. This... Uh, give me the give me the Manders at home. Um, I think the Steelers were rolling. Um, talked about the new additions. I don't know if they're going to make an impact right away. Uh, but, yeah, I think the I think the bye week almost hurts them a little bit more than, than helps them. I think they were getting going. Um, I could argue against that. Yeah, I guess. Well, I'm just looking at historically the Steelers are well, under Mike Tomlin after the bye. They've been insanely good. I have, I have, I did see that Mike Tomlin is uh, very good against rookie quarterbacks as well. And off the bye, and then ha- have I was going to say, has Jaden Daniels seen this type of defense? He's seen the Bears defense, but they couldn't score touchdowns until they held Mary. Um, so it's another one of those games where they can't really get in the end zone. So I was thinking maybe Steelers because that's the, those, those are the reasons to pick the Steelers. Commanders at home. The Steelers... Uh, they played the Falcons in week one, but the Falcons were clearly not ready. Other than that, they've played Steelers playing great football. They haven't seen this offense. Nothing quite like it. And if there is a way to beat the Steelers defense, it's running the football. They can run the football at Jaden Daniels. They can run it with Brian Robinson Jr. if he plays. They can run it with Eckler at home. I'll take the Commanders just because it's uh it's it's a new test for both these teams. I, again, I think the Commanders were actually more tested playing against that Bears defense, but uh, yeah, it's tough. I can see the Steelers winning off the bye. For sure could see that. So this is one of the tougher ones of the week. I am feeling Washington in D.C. It's a big week for D.C. Take the Commanders. Big day for D.C. Uh, give me the Steelers on the road. Okay. Uh, me and Dan, we've been Steelers oh, you talk fans to our whole life. Yeah, I talked to him. And we've both been Steelers fans our whole life. So we're both taking the Steelers here on the road. We love a good road dog. And – I don't know. Mike Tomlin's numbers, like you were saying, against rookie quarterbacks and off the bye is just it's it's tough to bet against a new coaching staff with a rookie quarterback. It's just I wish Pittsburgh was home. I'd feel a little a little less uneasy about this pick, but this is one of those that it's I feel like it's a good upset to potentially. If Marshawn Latimer is healthy, I think you put him in there, you play him. I mean there's gonna be a lot of man coverage. He doesn't need to learn the defense that much. Just yeah. go out there and, and cover George Pickens, lock him up. What is who's an easier one to Easier I mean corner is a tough position to play, but it's an easier position to like insert a guy that just got traded. Well, yeah, over. especially in a man co- heavy man coverage defense. Yeller's got the commanders, but we got a good old fashioned split big ounce that's going with the Steelers. God, oh. I don't like being on big ounce's side so much. Game of the week right status here. right here. Three versus three. Steelers commanders comment. Let us know who you're taking in this battle. Next video, I'll do my score predictions, picks against the spread. We have all kinds of trade deadline videos, all kinds of content on the channel. The trade deadline pass now, but yeah, join us. Just let us know about this matchup. I don't want to see you give me every matchup. Just give me this one. Don't give me all your picks. Just Just give me this this one. one. Then we'll tell if they're actually watching the video. Give me this this one. Ooh. Oh, the Jags re- revealing, reveal, or breaking out. I don't know what I'm bussing trying to say. Out. They're busting out the white helmets just for the Vikings. Cam Robinson revenge game. Oh. Cam Robinson, who started right away and played pretty well against the Colts for the Vikings. Uh, yeah, Vikings at you. I'll say what. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, the Jags, they're still sloppy, but overall they might be playing better football. They outplayed the Eagles in the second half. They were right there with the Packers two weeks ago. They shellacked the Patriots before that. So they could be a little sneaky here. I don't think the Vikings are playing as good as they were the first four weeks, we'll say. I know they went 5-0 and to start. Tony's getting a little sloppy. Uh, yeah, I mean, they did outplay the Colts by a bit, even when they were losing. Uh, the defense stepped up for sure. Uh, yeah, Darnold's looking like Sam Darnold. I'm not really thrilled about it right now. Uh, Addison just getting wide open for touchdowns, and then you know he actually got a touchdown, an incredible catch. But um, yeah, Jags run a lot of man coverage. That uh, defense is struggling. I think Jefferson, Hawkinson, um, who didn't really do much last week, Addison, all these guys should get some good separation. And uh, 
That should. I, I think a little more offense. I don't expect the Vikings. Well, they could turn Trevor Lawrence over for sure, but I, I think there'll be a bit of passing, a successful passing on both sides of this one. But I wasn't thrilled about Darnold, Darnold in the last game, so let's see him get back on track here. But I'll take the Vikings, just the better team right now. Uh, but the, the White Helmets, they're, some, they're something. Give me the Vikings at, on the road here. Uh, like you said, Jags are overall playing better, but still extremely sloppy, and it just – yeah. I don't know. They're, they're every time, every I feel like every game they've played, there's there's at least a part of the game that you're just like, oh, all right, maybe maybe if they get the rest going, but then as soon as they get the rest going, that part, like, I don't know. I don't think it's Lawrence's fault, um, but I don't, that, I don't know. I, I want to say coaching, but I feel like that's just an easy thing to say. Um, I just think that they kind of, I don't know. It just doesn't seem doesn't seem like a well oiled machine. Okay. All right. Yeah, give me the Vikings here. Um, He's taking the Vikings. Not feeling here. the white helmets there. Not feeling it. No, they should. They should just wear those throwbacks. Those throwbacks are throwbacks nice. are clean. Throwback yeah. clean. Yeller's definitely going with the Vikings. Yep. Big out taking outs. the Jags. Warriors. No, he's got the Vikings mm-hmm. here as well. Okay, no upset there. So there's a guarantee. Don't even watch that one. I know it, you might want to see those white helmets, but nope. Don't even turn it on. No. You Focus can, on the other games. Uh, you can find it elsewhere. Uh-huh. Ooh, Ooh, pizza big Titans those, guy. Those colors right there. That's nice. This is a nice color matchup right here. There you go. No, no. Chargers. <laughs> bolt up, baby. Yeah, Junior's uh, bolt up. Yeah, I don't know. I thought Levis was going to play last week. I think he's going to play this week. How's his week of practice going? I mean, they didn't practice. I mean, they practice <laughs> what they have today, like a walkthrough, like a, you know, going through the, the game plan type stuff. I don't think they really did much, but – uh. I, yeah, love, I, think, I love the report you sent us about Levis. It was, was like he's had a good week. <laughs> he's had a good I week said, of practice. Did I say <laughs> I think you – what do you guys send a thing about Will Levis? And it was like – it was a tweet, and it, the, the quote was like, he's had a good week of practice, but he's just not quite ready yet. Oh, oh I think I just <laughs> sent it because uh, – He's not frisky enough yet. <laughs> I sent it because I switched my pick because he was out. I was like, he's out, Drake May's in, I'm taking the Patriots, but that backfired. All right, this is an easy one. Chargers lock, lock easy. Drew lock it in. Not Everyone's, on either of these teams. Everyone's got the Chargers. Chargers defense looking fierce. Justin Herbert getting going. Herbert's just – he's just him. He's him. Yeah. He's Hardball, just, you see Hardball gives out eight – million game balls after the game no. and gives all of them high fives just like this. Uh, he's so funny. Everybody gets a game ball. He's a goofy guy. How does he get – like, he's so weird. He's so goofy, like, all the stuff he Herbert's does. Herbert's the fun. I think but everyone like, how does, loves it, but no, Herbert's, I know, but Herbert's like, the one that's like, uh, no, like my, this guy's weird, the man. The point I'm making is, like, everywhere he goes, he has success. Like, he went to the 49ers, and they were a really good team. He went to the Super Bowl. He went to Michigan, won a national championship, and now he goes to the Chargers, who, like, we thought – we're going to struggle a little bit this year with, you know, limited weapons on offense and, you know, they're making it work. He's just a good football yeah. coach, man. And he's, he's just a he's just a goofy guy. So like you're like, how does he get these guys bought in? But he just does it. I don't know how I want He's intense. I want to know his I want to know his secrets. I want to go there for like a week and just kind of just sit there and observe and watch what You what have a doing. hardball story. Have you ever tell have you ever told the har- hardball uh, story? Yeah, this is just a story I was told um I wasn't there personally, but I thought you were. No, this is before I got to where I'm at now, like where I'm coaching. But um, there was a player. Did from, you know the player? No, oh. like this is before I got there. Like he was, I think. He's. he's but he, of, he was on. He's at, at your college. school, though. Yeah, he was at our school, and he was like a big recruit, big D lineman, and he went up to Michigan, where Harbaugh was, and like. Basically, uh, the story, I, I mean, again, I can't tell the story as good as the people that actually were there, but basically the, the gist of the story was Harbaugh was so fascinated by the kid's neck, like by how wide and like thick his neck was. He just kept talking about the guy's neck, and the kid was like trying to talk to him and like just like get to know, you know, about the program and stuff like that, but but Harbaugh was just, just like in his own world <laughs> about neck. the neck. He's like, that neck, he kept like slapping it and grabbing his neck. And he was like, he was like calling coaches over to like check out this kid's neck. That's all. That's all he was doing the whole entire time. Just uh, a weird dude. Well, okay. Just a weird dude. Uh, next matchup: oh. Eagles, Cowboys. Unfortunately, Dak's going to be out for a bit. It's going to be good old Cooper Rush. Oh. And they did get Jonathan Mingo for a fourth round pick. Uh, oh yeah. Thank God. Or, I Thank think, God. I think we're all going with the Eagles. Yeah, everyone's Cooper going. Rush, get him going, maybe. No. Maybe. No. Dak's not playing too good. No, he's not. 
Every year we have the same conversation about Dak Prescott. I think this year's a little different. One second you're like, you're like, you know, is he elite? Is he is he elite? Worth, I don't know if we ever. I'm said saying, that. is he like top ten? Is he worth the uh, worth the big contract that he just got paid? And then big ounce do it? Did he do it? No, no. He wouldn't dare. And then he does the stuff he's doing right now. He just throws some terrible interceptions. He's always always done it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not a great now year for the Cowboys, but they got Mingo on board. Watch yeah. out. Watch out. Ladies and gentlemen, maybe they run him the ball. We'll see. Uh, okay. All right, we're flying. Ooh. Oh, this is a good one, though. Speaking of flying, we got the Jets Ooh. and the Cardinals. Ooh. Is that good? Did I do good there? Good. Uh, both, both things fly. The Jets. Oh, oh, just yeah, you got it. No, you I got, got it. Uh, the Jets, something, something clicked at the end of that last game. On Halloween, the offense got Lone going dog. against a top three pass defense. Devonta Adams got going at the end. Uh, the defense was getting after. They couldn't stop the run, but they were getting after C.J. Stroud. So maybe this is where the Jets go. Maybe this is where the, the you know Rodgers seems confident about it. This is where they go. Cardinals are putting together a little bit of a streak, three-game winning streak. They're looking good. They look good on both sides of the ball last week. I know people probably aren't fully buying into their defense. Uh, they did tra- uh, excuse me, trade for Baron Browning. That's a pretty solid trade. We'll see if he's any type of factor in this game. Uh, but their offense is getting going. They ran the ball well last week. This is this is good. Hey, this is one of the toughest ones. This yeah. is uh, one of the best ones of the week. Taking the Cardinals at home. Junior's taking the Cardinals at home. I think my favorite part of the Cardinals game last week was them how long it took to close the dome. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're just talking about the dome. I did not check the weather before. They're not just like, "Oh, it's going to rain, so like let's let's close the let's close the dome up cuz it's going to rain." They didn't check the weather like, "No, let's just open it up." It's funny cuz the dome is only over the field. So like the fans are not getting rained yeah. on and just the players. Apparently it was like hail, right? Yeah, it was, it was like hail coming hail. down. The Jets definitely can get things rolling. I mean, they actually have success on offense this game. I probably not a full game. They're due for some sloppiness. Cardinals don't have the greatest defense in the world, even though they played well last week. So could see the Jets getting going. They do have a good pass defense, so maybe they don't let Kyler Murray throw all over them. But it does seem like see what Joe Mix. I know Joe Mixon's on our level. We saw what he did to that Jets defense. The Cardinals are very, very good running the football right now, led by James Conner, but getting multiple guys involved. And they have a good day on the ground. But one key thing I have noticed quarterbacks not design runs not design runs quarterbacks are scrambling very very well on the jets right now and kyler murray is a dangerous scrambler something to watch for that was the deciding factor for me that one little bonus part of the game in arizona give me the cardinals i lone dog the jets last week but i'm not gonna pick them this oh Uh, yeah i like the cardinals in this matchup i uh i don't know i one of the most overrated players in the league, especially this year, is Sauce Gardner. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Guy holds. Uh, you can't keep up receivers. I don't oh, know. Jets can't, fans can't are going to cancel your ass. I'm telling you. I mean, you guys. They they should know too. <laughs> He's a golfer. Wa- they He's should a be watching now. the film. Uh, but yeah, I think the Cardinals have some success on offense, and the Jets are just too inconsistent on the, on offense. They should be a lot better on offense with all the weapons they have, but they're just too inconsistent. Yeller. He's got the Cardinals. Ounce is taking the Jets. Big Ounce got the Jets. He's That's the lone, good. He's the um, lone dog. Thank God for Big Ounce because somebody had to take the Jets. Yeah, I thought is, I thought we game. were. I thought we, this is, might be the one where we got like a three-three split on yeah. or something. So, um, so Cardinals are only, only favored by ones. one. It's only. Oh yeah, it was a three-three split with Dan, right? Gotcha. Yep. Should we put Dan? No, he didn't. You didn't talk no. to him about this game. Okay, no, I didn't. we're moving on. It's a good one though. Watch that one for sure. Uh, what do we got, folks? Ooh. Oh, so I, did I tell you the primetime games were good or what? Sunday night football, the Lions at the Texans, and the Texans are wearing those all red, new, clean alternates. Looking good. The Lions look like the best team of football. Uh, the Texans, I didn't, mean, I didn't mean they were looking good. I meant the uniforms there. It didn't look so good last week, but they were in New York, primetime, they get Nico Collins back this week. The Jets' pass rush is legit. Yeah, I know the Lions trade for Zedaria Smith, but that pass rush is not the same as the Jets, so Stroud should have a little bit more time, a bit more time to throw than he did against the Jets. And you can throw on the Lions' defense, even though it's playing well right now. So the Texans at home, right when everyone's getting down on them, could 
have some success and get going. My problem is here, a couple things. Tough to pick against the Lions right now. Also, a big the biggest part of the Texans' offense right now is Joe Mixon. And I do think he could have success in this game, but the Lions aren't going to let him torch them, like completely beat them. They have a, one of the very best run defenses in football, and I do think the Lions' running game will have a big day here. And even though I don't think the the Texans will – or Stroud will get uh, – pressured or hit as much as he did against the Jets. I, I still think that's a problem. That offensive line looked that bad. So I will take the Lions, but I totally could see the Texans turning it on here uh, and, and beating the Red Hot Lions. But that's what I got. Could, could see it. Definitely could see it. Taking the Lions, um, I mean, I've been saying this for quite a bit of weeks now, but the Texans just don't look the same. They don't look as dangerous. Yeah, they're still good, even before they're in these kind of bigger injuries they've had. They just don't look – they don't look like they're all on the same page. They don't look clean. It does not really – it's working sometimes, but – I tell you what, though. Nico Collins did look like the clear best receiver in football when he was playing. So him coming back here, uh, if he's it. for sure coming back, I don't. we don't know yet. Yeah. But um, I think it will be huge for them. I think he could torch up the Lions because yeah. he's not on the film, the recent games either. I think this will be a close one like just because of that reason. If Nico Collins is out, the Lions are blowing him out. But like you're saying, I can't pick can't pick against the Lions right now. They're like the best team in football. I in the running game's the thing here. Like I, I love Joe Mixon. I think he can run well. The Lions aren't gonna let a running game just completely just blow him away. And the Lions could dominate anyone with their ground game. And if there was a weakness of the Texans defense, I think you can run on them a little bit. The D line's been much better since Danico Autry was in has been in there because he was on um he was on a suspension. So, uh, but for the juice, I think whoever runs better in this game, I think they're both going to throw about the same. I think the Texans actually might throw a little bit better. Whoever runs better is going to win this game. I would take that's the main reason I'm taking the Lions there. Yellers got the Lions, and you know. Big, Big ounce. ounce. Got used Not it. a bad pick. Got the Texans. Not a bad pick. And he is a Texans guy. It's okay. Yeah. So we're all right. It's okay. All right. There you have it for Sunday Night Football. I love this Monday Night Football game. This is a good one, folks. We got the oh. Dolphins going to L.A., another home primetime game, second one in three weeks for the Rams, who are starting to heat up. It was a weird game against Seattle. I mean, both the, these two teams – the games these two teams played in last week were really entertaining, really, really good. The Rams won maybe the best one of the week. Overtime, Stafford, Marcus Robinson, very much clutch. It was such a weird game, though. It was like all defense for a while and not the greatest offense. And I was like, wow, how is this even possible? And then it was a mixture of Geno throwing bad interceptions, but a whole lot of offense and no defense. So it was a strange game. The Dolphins had the Cardinals, and then they let it slip away. And last week, they had the Buffalo Bills, they let it slip away. The defense is really, really letting them down here. This should be an offensive game. This should definitely be a shootout game. It should be a lot of fun. In L.A., the Rams are a different team at home. The Dolphins' defense is struggling. You can run all over them. Kyron Williams could definitely do it after an off week last week, but my gut is telling me something else. I'm going to go with the Miami Dolphins. I think the offense really gets going in this game. They've been so close the last two weeks. In the two weeks they had Tua back, they're they're that close. They're about to just break out and win that game. So I don't trust the defense. Again, the matchup probably sides with the Rams at home. So this is a little bit different, a little bit um, unlike me, I, I suppose, a little bit. But I just got a feeling Dolphins offense wins it. Yeah, I keep wanting to pick the Dolphins too. Cause Tyreek like, Hill breaks out. Like you're saying, they're they're so close right now. Uh, but I'm gonna go with the Rams at home, and uh, I think again yeah, it comes down to I'm gonna say it comes down to the better better coach here. I think Sean McVay is definitely the better coach. Uh, I do not trust Mike McDaniel this year, especially um, when when you lose. I understand you lose your quarterback. Like I know he's back in the lineup, but lose your quarterback like you're. Your team and your offense gets derailed a little bit, but like if you're a good coach, offensive minded coach, you got to come up with something. Like they had no answers at all. Jalen Waddle does not look very good this year either. Um, Tyree Kill even He'll looks be all right. I know, He'll I know. Again, right. Tua wasn't in there. Uh, well, the thing Kill, with the Dolphins too, they run such like a high tempo offense. So, and when they got Huntley off the streets, it's really tough. That's yeah. that's, that's an extra, I think adjust. it's extra tough. I agree. Mike you got to find a way. Mike McDaniel came from the. From, I'm a find a way 40, kind of guy. Forty Niners, you don't need to run that up tempo stuff. You go back to my running Forty Niners style type playbook. 
But uh, my issue with the, with Mike McDaniel usually is kind of going away from what's working. It's usually the run game, like being a little stubborn, like kind of just going automatically going back to the pass. I think he's getting better at it. They've been running A-chan a lot. They got Mostert in the mix. Even Jalen Wright rips off some good runs. That could be a factor in this game if Mike McDaniel understands that, hey, the run game has to be part of the game plan. You know, a little bit like it was last week, maybe do it a little bit more. But I do think they can throw well on the Rams too. I'm taking the Rams at home here. Um I don't know. They just seem like they're finally, once as they're getting oh, all these I guys back, they're just really balling. I think they win in a commanding fashion, Oh, to be honest. Ooh. I think it's going to be a good game. It'll be a shootout, but go with the Rams. Uh, Geller's, got, Geller's got the Rams as well, and then Big Ounce is going to join you on the Dolphins. I was hoping I was lone wolf. My gut was telling me about this one here, but Big Ounce joins me on the Dolphins. There we go. That's going to be a good one. The primetime games are must Watch TV. The refs have been awesome. Pretty awesome. terrible on those primetime games, though. So that's that's the who. who I'll stop myself. That's awesome. that's the sketchy. That's the sketchy part. But um, some really solid games this week, and there's some really game. There's some games that some really games. There's some games that uh, seem pretty straightforward, but there's always those upsets. We're not done yet, folks. Not done. We got Pete's buy team oh. power rankings customized just. For Pete Do we this got week. Candy? I want the candy. No, we don't have the candy. We have some interesting tears here. Uh, so here are your buy teams. You got the Seahawks. You got the Browns. You got the Browns. There we go. You got the Packers and you got the Raiders. The tiers. Pete's buy team of the week. Nobody's ever been in place in that tier. Rubbing people the right way. Frisky booty cheeks and rubbing people the wrong way. Mm. And oh. this, this, people are like, where the hell does he decide that stuff? It's from the segment last year when we were talking about the Browns kind of inspired those tears. Maybe that I started with the bottom one, the graphics guy. I started with the bottom left one, rubbing people the wrong way because that's what was said in a classic moment last year. And then I kind of came up. The graphics guy kind of came up with the other tears there. So now Pete has to. Well, first we got to decide who wins the bye mm -hmm. week. And to me, that is extremely, extremely easy. The Raiders and Browns don't don't need it. They are losing football games. They're not going any, anywhere. It's going to be the winner is going to be the Green Bay Packers because Jordan Love is clearly not healthy, and that could be a very good team if he is healthy. And they are a good team, but uh, they kind of need this bye right now. I would agree with that. He's going to agree with that. Yeah. Okay, Pete, you're That's up. it. You guys are done. I got to think about this. This is tough. Well, we know who's rubbing people the wrong way. <laughs> the Browns are the rubbing. Browns. Well, I mean, Deshaun Watson's not playing for them anymore. Still. Yeah, but still. It's I mean, now more than ever, to be honest. He's they, recovering from they, the injury. They set the Texans up. They went out and paid this guy all That's that. That's a good point because he's off doing. We don't. Who knows? Yeah, who knows hey, what he's doing? He could really but be rubbing people the wrong he's way. He's literally right now, probably out with the streets, massage therapist right out now. Out in the streets right now rubbing the people the wrong way. Um, <laughs> in the street, but yeah. Uh, the Raiders are just straight booty cheeks. Oh my! <laughs> besides, besides Mad Max though, that guy's that guy's something. That's that that's, guy's Pete's buy to the week. Yeah, that guy is. Uh, We're seeing a picture the, of Mad he's Max. He's the two-time, the two-time junkyard junkyard dog, dog uh, player of the year. Uh, oh, this, this is where it gets interesting here. The Seahawks. Ah. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know if they're. I don't even know if they're frisky. I don't even. Are they know. booty cheeks? They're not booty cheeks, though. I don't know. I guess we could put them in the frisky category. See what I thought you were gonna do? I thought you were actually gonna put them booty cheeks, and I thought you were gonna put even though they are better than booty cheeks. But I thought you were gonna put the Raiders down there with the Browns. But this is your show. This is my show. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, the Seahawks. You know, I'm a big fan of uh, Mike McDonald, but. Uh, I don't know. I just don't know about their roster, really. I don't know about what they're. Constructing, they're in a kind of bad spot too. Like, is Gino really like the guy? Like, Gino shows some moments, doesn't show some moments, um, and then they're always going to be finishing in that 500 category. They're going to be picking like in the late teens. Like, they're never going to be able to to get the quarterback that they that they need for that team. Uh, the Packers. Do I don't know. Pete. I don't know if are, I mean are they rubbing people the right way. Yeah, they are. are yeah, they are. are they frisky. Even, even from a Bears, even from a Bears fan. See, I picked the. Packers to win the Super Bowl, and I would put them in the frisky tier right now because they're just frisky. They're, yeah, get, they're, they're getting there. They're going to get there. Frisky could be a good thing. Like, hey, we're getting frisky. I think it could be a good thing. Yeah. Definitely a good thing. That's I what I mean. That's why I didn't want to put the Seahawks really in the frisky category because I don't think they're there yet. Um, this is like that right there. They're like right in the middle there. Um, 
yeah, I mean, I think I think they Jordan Love just needs to get healthy, so this bye week's going to be big for him. Um, getting that groin all all figured out. Um, maybe he could, you know, learn from Deshaun Watson where to Goes go. Goes behind us. Ooh. He should stopped, not he learn stopped, from he him. Stopped, he stopped me there. He stopped me there. Maybe you should. Maybe you should go and. Uh, nope. Don't even finish. <laughs> don't even start it again. He's got a groin. He's got a groin issue. Maybe he's got to figure it out. They should uh, not be growing to the same. Place. So what you're saying is the <laughs> trainers need to rub Jordan Love the right way. Yes. Okay, there, we there we go. Rub him. Fix, the, rub him the right way. Get rub him, him down. Get, get him, that groin going. Get him back. Ready to go. Ready to go for the second half of the season. Make a run for the Super Bowl. And then finish. <laughs> Oh boy! Uh, I was so enthusiastic because <laughs> they gotta finish. They gotta win it. They gotta make my prediction come true. I don't know if they will or not. We'll find out. I don't gotta know. beat the Lions first. Lions. I, if Love can't get fully healthy, they're not gonna win it. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. I, every time, like, he's nursing two injuries now. Yeah. He wasn't fully back from the knee. Yeah, right, I think right. I think uh, I think they got to start leaning on the run game a little bit more with Josh Jacobs, and I think that's going to be well. Marshawn Lloyd's going to be getting in there pretty Ooh. soon. He's a fantastic rookie running back. Well, we oh. think he's going to be a fantastic rookie running back. I think he's going to be really good. Yeah, well, there you have it. For that's a classic. That's an instant classic. Pete's by team Raiders. week. Raiders team power cheeks. rankings. What did I just say? What they just put Desmond Ritter in there? I can't believe that booty cheeks. Yeah, it's just the whole. The we could have put Ritter up here too. The whole team besides cheeks. besides Mad Max over there. Yep. Like I, I don't. I, I'm and I'm being dead serious. We don't like, know about Bowers. Oh Brock, I forgot. That's no, Bowers, Brock Bow. Mad Max and Brock Bowers and everyone else is booty cheeks on that team. <laughs> Okay. Even the All staff, right. uh, not Tom Brady though. I don't know why Tom Brady chose to be part owner of of the Raiders. All right. Maybe he could. Maybe he could turn around. Maybe. Did you see that they fired? Uh, they fired their co- offense coordinator. They they've like fired a coordinator mid season for like four straight years. I've saw, I saw. That's like, the way. That's just not key to success. Yeah, it's really working. Luke Getzey and the yeah, Bears. Your guy, Luke. And the Bears have never fired a head coach. And remember that whole uh, Nagy thing? How those like reports he was getting fired, mm-hmm. and it was like getting leaked, and then they just didn't fire him, but they were totally gonna do it. Yeah. Remember the whole Allen Williams thing? Yeah, whatever. We no, never even found out. No was, one ever. Was, How do you just that keep our, that a secret? How does that just stay a secret? That was our whole uh, bye week yeah. thing last last year. That's yeah. That's what created inappropriately and criminally bad. <laughs> that's what created that. Not it was nothing criminal, just inappropriate. inappropriate yeah, yeah, that's like what Eberflus said, right? Eberflus got some good quotes that I, are also everyone terrible. was reporting that. But no, Eberflus literally said it out loud. Yeah, he did. it wasn't criminally bad, but it was inappropriately bad. That's what started this whole segment last year. Do you think he came up with that? Do you think they like someone told him to no, say that? No, he was that? definitely told to say that. Just, just so weird. How though. how do they keep that? The so the how do they keep that hidden? Like under the wrap? Like how how do they? I don't know. He probably just cheated on his wife. He would get fired for that. I I that's inappropriate, but not criminally. It had to be worse than that. If it's somebody on the staff, maybe. But somebody else didn't get fired. That Remember way. the guy in the Celtics? Yeah, the was, Celtics head coach, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I guess. That that was a weird one. They fired him for that. But it was somebody on the staff. Yeah. So maybe it was somebody on the staff? Maybe. Yeah, but how's nothing came out? It sounded a lot worse than that. Like, it sounded like something bad. Like he was r- dr- part of a drug cartel or something? Something like that. But I don't know. The Bears, just, they made it go away. <laughs> they made it go away. Any other zingers for us, for me, Pete? Um, no. I mean, I'm getting more, more and more uh, love at at work right now for the for the goat house. You're famous, so pig, Pigskin Pete. Pigskin some handshake, shaking hands. Oh, kissing, they're gonna kissing babies, kissing babies right. out there on election day. They're gonna love this segment from you. Uh, uh, <laughs> you should start. I didn't just do comp- anything. Start complimenting everyone's neck. Yeah. When they're saying, oh, my God, Pixie and Pete, nice to meet you. you just like, give nice one of to these. meet you. You got a neck on you. Yeah. You know that? I, I, if I've learned one thing from Harbaugh, that's – Just be like, can I get a picture He likes of a that? good neck. Maybe that's maybe that's the key to success. I don't know. Good neck. Yeah. I'll start evaluating draft prospects by their neck But that size. kid actually ended up going to Michigan State. He went to, he went, he went oh. against him there. Did not. He was not happy with that visit there mm, from okay. what I was told. Yeah. 
just weirded out. Yeah, he just didn't get any type of like info at all, or get to know just coach, at his neck. Coach Harbaugh, or get to know <laughs> about the program or the players. He just got told all day about how crazy his neck was. Was so. his neck that great? I haven't, I haven't, I haven't. I would met love him. to see. He's it. a big. He's, I've seen pictures of him. He's a big dude. I would love to see this yeah. neck. That's how we're gonna end. Can we find this love guy? A picture? Can we find a picture of this guy? I'd love to see his neck. Can we find it? Uh, I forget his name, honestly. Uh, I mean, it's he's got there's there's twin brothers, so there's twin brothers. If, um, if you forgot his name, we're not gonna find yeah. it. So, I, all right, I probably could dig around and find it, but all right, yeah, right. Next, for next, you got next some week. homework we'll for next week. You, you and the graphics guy get on the homework there. Uh, okay, that is gonna wrap up week ten pickums. We'll be back next week with week eleven pickums. And then the week after, week 12, pick them. So we got loads of content. Next video, score predictions, picks against spread for every single game. We got power rankings already up. Like, subscribe, turn notifications on. That's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye. You did it.